Uh, Jay here with Live to Journey. What you're about to see is a replacement of my rear stabilizer jack on my Keystone Cougar. I did a boo-boo in my first month of owning this. I, I didn't do things in the right order and I crushed my arm. So this is the repair for it. Saved me uh, at least $600 uh, to do it the way I did it. And, and if anybody else has this issue where you made a mistake and you bent one of your stabilizer arms, don't spend money to replace the whole system, which is they don't sell the parts for it. Uh, it's pretty easy to repair, so check it out. So as you see, that's the bend. Where it broke or bent, so I'm gonna take that arm off. All right. So I might need to take the entire system off. I can't get the arm off, so I'm gonna probably take the whole system off first. Okay, pump the brakes. So after I uh, took this apart, I realized that you do not have to. Let me show you. You don't have to remove this part here. Just remove these two bolts and this whole system slides out once you take the motor off, which is just four screws and then you're good to go from there. So you can just skip forward to the part where I have it all off and I'm taking the motor off and get the slide out to see that next bit. Or you can watch the whole thing. didn't bring my socket set. I almost just brought two wrenches, adjustable wrenches. I'm so glad I brought my socket set. So it looks like this, these arm systems right here are in the track. A part of this track right here inside this, this frame. So it looks like I might just have to undo some screws on the outside maybe. And I can slide that whole track out of there. <clears throat> we'll see. Looks like I do have to take the motor off, so I'll do that now. And that's just uh, pull it on. All right, so here's the stabilizer off the uh, frame that I got it off. That's it. Pretty easy to come off the uh, motor. Did these four screws right here and the motor just kind of pulled right out of the shaft pretty easy so that'll just leave underneath the trailer and that'll be that for that i removed the two bolts that were on both sides of that bolt here bolt here and this this piece was in here it just stood in there like that and it came out just like that 
And then I'm going to go do the other side. do is bring in both of these to the uh, metal fabrication place so they can see them both. Um, this what he's probably going to do from what he said on the email is um, cut this both sides and just weld a new piece in place to make it nice and stable. And that's it. That's how that comes apart. trailer dock and fab shop to um, take those arms in from our stabilizer to get the uh, fix done. Now we're staying here at uh, Grand Lake RV Resort, right? Yes. Grand Lake RV Resort in Ocala, Florida. I've it's been told. It's actually Citra, Florida. It's actually Reddick, Florida. <laughs> Depending on if you Google it or use the mailing address or ask somebody. So that's what we're doing right now and uh, hopefully they can knock it out quick because we're trying to sell it and we might have a buyer. Crossed. Yay! So the reason why we're doing this, we have the Lippert stabilizer jacks under our Keystone Cougar. And Lippert makes most of the stabilizer jacks for every RV, so if something goes wrong with your stabilizers or if you bend them like I did, which I talked to Lippert um, and they said it happens a lot, but you can't buy parts for it. You have to buy the entire system, either the rear or the front jack, whichever one you destroyed. When I looked uh, for it, I think they quoted me at like 650 or something like that. We decided that we were gonna get it fixed ourselves. I called a bunch of fabricators, metal fabricator shops um, in, in and around Ocala area. But the trailer place got back to me and said, should be easy. I sent them pictures of it and they said, easy fix. So we're on our way there now. I don't know how much this is going to cost, but I can't imagine it's going to cost anywhere close to $600 for a whole new system. You've seen how it's pretty easy to take it off the RV, you saw that, so if you're even a little bit handy and have some tools, then you can you can do this yourself and save yourself, you know, $600 or, or at least a few hundred dollars is what I'm hoping. But we'll see as soon as we get it back from them, talk to them about how much it's going to cost, and uh, we'll go from there. But I'm excited, because I like saving money. Who doesn't? All right. Good news. He said, he said they'll do it today. Nice. It shouldn't take more than an hour. Um, and they charge $95 an hour. But he said he doesn't think it'll take more than an hour because it looks like a quick quick fix. And I'll get it done today. So hopefully we will, uh, they're going to give me a call back whenever they finish it. And we'll shoot back over. It's only about a 30 minute drive for us, 25 minutes. Hey, even if it takes two hours and it costs me $200, that's still uh, $400, $450 yeah. cheaper than it would have been to order it and do all that stuff. So a little bit of sweat Sweet. equity and uh, hopefully we get a call back from them soon and we can come and pick it up. Awesome. Let's go. So just to recap what happened, the reason why my stabilizer arm is bent like that is because the first month or two that we were going out, we had gone to stay at our children's place in front of their, in front of their house right on the side of the, the street. And the curb kind of rolled off, so I had the right side of the trailer up on the Anderson blocks, leveling blocks, and it was at the very tip. So I got nervous from the motion of, of uh, taking the stabilizers down that it would come off the front of that Anderson block and fall. So I had this grand idea to get, I was like, well, I'll get the truck under the hitch, then I won't have to worry about it. So. In an effort to try and keep myself from having a disaster, I ended up creating one. Because when I put the truck under the hitch, I had to raise the front of the trailer so that I could get the truck under it. And when I did that, I wasn't thinking, and I raised it, and all the weight went onto the back of that stabilizer, and it bent my arm. So that's what happened, and that's why we're doing this fix right now.
trailer dock and fab shop. Here we are. Someone told me to take a two-inch tube and pound it out. I'll well, fit number one. I had actually considered uh, I considered trying to bend it back out myself and then just bracing it with wood or something. Just well, to... A little buckle in the back that you only allows to drill it and pull it up. But that's not going to affect you, right? So from what it was, a thousand percent different. This actually has a little bevel to it. It should be exactly the same. So. So you just straighten it back out and then added those two. Uh, yes, and then we cut two pieces of angle, angle iron. So it's, and he welded a lot more than he needed to. I mean, he, he did a lot this long, but I was afraid he'd heat it up and burn through it, but he did, he's a good welder. So that strengthens your sidewalls and your bottom. Yeah. There's no way to bend that angle. Cool. You know, and we didn't have to mess with the pin or cut any of the original bracket. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and cool. how much did this cost me? Uh, well, I did 75. I did three quarter hour and Five dollars a minute, or more than three dollars a minute. That's great. But we kept the original positions because we never had to cut anything or remove these pins at yeah, all. Yeah, that works great so. too. So there you have it. Awesome. I'm gonna put my stabilizer back together right here. Put these arms back on where they belong, and then I'll bring it back out to the little trailer to put it back on the trailer itself. We'll be good to go. now and they're nice and perfect that's the fix so now we just got to bring it back to the little trailer and attach it to the trailer and we're good to go so I put the I put this frame back up because as I said earlier I didn't have to take this off I didn't realize it until after I took it off so I got this back on so I'm gonna slide this back in there and then I'll put the motor on. Again, when you're uh, you get one same problem, one of these bends, and you need to take this out, you don't have to remove this whole system. All you gotta do is undo these uh, this pin from each of these yellow brackets, and the whole thing slides right out. Once you just gotta take the motor off, and I'm about to put the motor back on right now. All I did is I just lined this up with the inside right there. A little pin, I'm just lining those up. So I had to get in there and I had to turn that to where it lined up so I could get this in there straight.
So that is all attached back on. All I gotta do is uh, manually bring those up, which we'll try to do right now. Bam! Cost me $75, a little bit of sweat equity, but to replace this whole system would cost uh, 600 and something just for the, the system itself, which it's pretty easy to install. As you see, for somebody who doesn't have the tools or the time or the space or whatever, then it would cost six something plus, you know, the service to, to get it done. So well worth it. So there it is. That's the Lippert power stabilizer repair job. So if you like this video, then please uh, like it, subscribe, leave some comments. Let me know if you'd have done anything different or if I uh, screwed anything up, which I don't think I did because it works. Thanks for following us. Thanks for checking us out. Got a lot more videos to come. I'm working on our season one editing right now and uh, we should have that in the work soon.